to the Muppet McGraw Show on Positive Hits Pulse FM and Watch ND. Tonight, we'll visit with the Hall of Fame Notre Dame women's basketball coach, Muppet McGraw. We'll hear the latest from the team and meet some players. The Muppet McGraw Show is brought to us by TireRack.com, Coors Light, South Bend Orthopedics, Bowling Vision Center, Coca-Cola, West Bend Insurance, St. Joseph Health System, UPS, Resonado, and O'Rourke's Public House. And now, from O'Rourke's Public House in Eddy Street Commons, it's Hall of Fame coach Muppet McGraw with Hall of Fame broadcaster Bob Nagel. And good evening, everyone. Welcome to O'Rourke's Public House here at Eddy Street Commons. We've got a wonderful night if uh, folks are going to enjoy some uh, great food and refreshments here and then maybe do a little shopping. That'd be a good idea. It's always a good idea to do some shopping this time of year. Welcome to the Muffet McGraw Show, show number two of the season. And uh, we uh, are really thrilled because we've got another uh, wonderful lineup joining us tonight. In addition to Coach McGraw will be Beth Cunningham, who is a member of our Ring of Honor at the University of Notre Dame and a former leading scorer for us. And now she's been on our staff for a number of years and really doing a great job uh, as uh, one of our top assistant coaches. And also we have uh, Marta Snezek who will be with us. And uh, Marta Snezek's been doing a great job uh, in her role as uh, running the uh, point guard position and taking some charges and doing a great job defensively. And uh, we're gonna have a special session again with Sam Brunell. So Sam's gonna join us later in the show and uh, have a chance to visit with Marta. And uh, we're looking forward to all that. We're gonna have trivia questions during the course of the show. We're going to take questions if you have them for Coach McGraw. And we're going to try to bring you up to date on all the exciting things going on. If you're just joining us, Anaya Peoples was voted the ACC Rookie of the Week this week, and uh, we're really proud of Anaya. 17.3 points per game, 8.7 rebounds, and she made the all-tournament team. And uh, Coach McGraw, I guess it's proof that if you're on our show, the next week you get a chance to... <laughs> Win, a, win an award. Uh, I guess the pressure's on for Marta and Sam today. That's right, and uh, they did a great job with us uh, last week. We uh, want to thank uh, our studio engineer tonight, uh, Jed DeVicke, uh, Bob Henning, our engineer on site, uh, doing a great job, and uh, our thanks again to the team here at O'Rourke's Public House. I also want to thank the Tire Rack, South Bend Orthopedics, Bowling Vision Center, West Bend Insurance, St. Joseph Health System, and UPS. What can Brown do for you? Well, we'll find out during the holidays, won't we? And our sincere thanks to all the fans who are here again tonight. You make this a very, a very special night. Coach McGraw, welcome back. Do I dare say Feliz Navidad? It's a bit early for that, but uh, I'll accept it. Well, it's, it's the only thing I knew how to say in, Sp <laughs> in Spanish. Just back from Cancun, Mexico, where uh, the uh, Irish had a, an outstanding experience. And again, there's so much that goes into this. You, you're obviously concerned about the games and the action you're going to get, but it's also a chance for the team to really meld together and have some uh, experiences. We went to Vancouver last year, Mexico this year, and those are all things that the kids will remember a long time. Yeah, they will. And uh, we, we did have three games down there, and, and I was worried playing five, six people that we weren't going to have enough left for the final game. Three games in three days is a lot to ask of a team. All the, all the other teams played eight or nine people. So we were a little bit behind, but we, we did a really great job. I thought our conditioning was terrific. I thought our recovery time, uh, the trainers did a great job for us. One of the things about the field, you know, you're going down there and we're talking about who you're going to be playing. We talked about that in the last show. And uh, the fact is that the only ranked team that was there went 0-3. So how good was the competition? It was pretty stiff. It really was. When we knew South Dakota State would be a good team and uh, definitely a team that's hard to guard. And, you know, we got down big early, as we've uh, kind of had a tendency to do this year. But we fought all the way back to tie the game and uh, just, you know, couldn't finish. Well, and uh, give credit to uh, Florida Golf Coast. They got off to a good start. And we had a number of turnovers in the game. And, again, it's that the communication that's going to come around. Uh, we get to know each other a little bit more. And uh, there's, there's only one way to get through that, and that's to play together and to continue to work. Yeah, we, 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 we didn't come out and play that game. It was uh, really disappointing to come off the Michigan win and think that we're finally turning a corner here and then to go out and play another game similar to the game against Toledo at home, uh, only we weren't able to finish it. Well, I'll tell you what, there's, uh, you get two wins this year over ranked teams already, and uh, 
there are some positives. We'll talk about those in the busy week coming up as well. And uh, we'll talk about uh, all the things that went on uh, down in uh, Mexico. And uh, right now we've got our next trivia question to pass along to everybody here. If you can write down your answer. Uh, here's our second question. Which one of these four teams have the Irish not faced in an ACC Big Ten Challenge game? We have uh, played three of these four teams. Penn State, Maryland, Purdue, or Ohio State? Which one of those four teams did we not play so far in the Big Ten ACC Challenge? Again, those four teams, Penn State, Maryland, Purdue, or Ohio State? Write down the answer, and our trivia question contest goes along. We'll be right back. We want to thank everybody here at our works, and our show is brought to you by the TireRack.com. Back with our Hall of Fame coach, Muffin McGraw, in just a moment. Stay with us. At first, it was just an annoyance, but then it started affecting my daily life. My hernia was stopping me from doing what I enjoy. That's when I learned about robotic surgery at St. Joe. With a simple outpatient procedure, I was back to normal in days, not weeks. Thanks to St. Joe, I've turned time sitting out into time cherishing the people I love. Get back to the things you enjoy. Schedule your hernia assessment today. Call 1-833-300-WELL. Hi, Irish fans. Jack Dolan here for UPS. Your customers want more from your business. You've got to make more happen, whether they're in Indiana or on the other side of the world. Globally or locally, UPS is building solutions to help businesses give their customers exactly what they want. More made easy. UPS, official partner of Notre Dame Athletics. As a coach, you wear many hats and need to be ready for anything. You want to be the best that you can be for your players. And LASIK definitely made a big difference for me. Now my vision is sharp and I can really focus on coaching. To be your best on the court, you need to be aware. And thanks to bowling, I'm not missing a thing. Learn more about Ryan's experience at BowlingHeroes.com. Bowling Vision Center. Amazing happens here. Right now, I'm holding a perfectly ice-cold Coors Light. You know how I know it's the perfect temperature? Because the mountain on the can is blue. And also, it's really cold. Every Coors Light is cold-filtered, cold-lagered, and cold-packaged. Notice how many times I said cold? Three times. It's that cold. So make sure the mountain on your can of Coors Light is blue, because that means it's ready to enjoy. 2019 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. Live from O'Rourke's Public House in Eddy Street Commons, it's the Muffet McGraw Show on Pulse FM. And we welcome you back once again to O'Rourke's Public House. We have a great crowd on hand here again tonight, enjoying all the uh, wonderful food and refreshments here. And uh, we have uh, some more information to uh, pass along to you. Uh, Jake Amodio, who's our uh, promotions director for all of our uh, games, hand me a note, and there's some other things to tell you about. We mentioned on December 11th the DePaul game is the Teddy Bear Toss game. On December 21st, we're uh, taking on a team from Canada. Uh, the team is from Guelph, Canada. And that is going to be Christmas at Purcell. So we're going to have a lot of special Christmas things going on there. That game on December 21st. And then on December 29th, ladies and gentlemen, it's the baby race. Remember seeing that last year? That was really uh, a lot of fun. So we're looking forward to the baby race coming up on December 29th. So we've got a lot of, a lot of things going on. We're here with Coach McGraw, who's uh, just back with the team from uh, – Mexico down in Cancun and coach uh, early Tuesday morning loaded up the buses and uh, off you go and uh, tell us about the uh, the travel experience uh, it was one of the few commercial flights we're involved with yeah it was it was actually really really good we left here at 5 a.m. Um, got up to Chicago at, at 6 for a 9 o'clock flight so we were plenty of there in plenty of time flights were all on time went right in uh, about an hour trip from Cancun Airport to the resort that we were staying at but everything was located right there so the practice gym and the uh, the court that we played on you could walk from your room right over to the gym so it was really convenient everything was uh, just geographically in a great place and they had a beach well they uh, they had a lot of, they had a lot of different pools. You couldn't actually go on the beach. Um, they they kind of had a lagoon that you could go on, 
and uh, and I hear the water was great. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's always a good uh, a good uh, chance for everybody to. Uh, have a lot of social time, but uh, again, you're keeping busy, and I know our ladies are also, a lot of them are taking their computers with them, keeping up to date on their schoolwork and things like that. So people, you know, especially on a road trip where you're playing three games in three days, everybody's busy. I mean, you're breaking down games, you're doing uh, uh, homework on the opponents, and uh, it's just everybody's got a busy schedule. And so three games in three days is a load. Yeah, it really is a lot. And, you know, we're trying to keep it simple with this team, but it's it's hard when you don't have the practice time because you want to keep them off their feet. So you want to do a lot with film, not so much on the walkthrough side. So we, we weren't able to go through quite as many things as we normally would. Um, so, you know, so that, that could have had a little bit of an effect on us too. We, we weren't didn't seem as though we were as quite aware of what the other team was going to be doing. Um, so I think uh, overall... A lot of good things happen. We're getting better as a team. I think that's the important thing. Well, and the team doesn't quit. I mean, you keep battling back even when you get yourself in a tough position. Uh, Florida Golf Coast uh, came out. They love to run. They want to play an up-tempo, and they're looking at our bench and saying, uh, you know, we can maybe uh, force the issue a little bit, and they were successful in doing that. Yeah, they're a team that shoots a lot of threes. I think they make 14 threes a game, and so we, we had to play a little more man-to-man -man than we wanted to, and they just took us off the dribble. We couldn't guard them man-to-man. Uh, -man. Then if we went to help, they'd kick it out to for somebody for an open three. So I, I thought defensively that was probably our worst game. When you look at the game uh, you played against South Dakota State, we have so much respect for their program and the way they love basketball up in South Dakota. I mean, uh, we had that experience up there a couple of years ago. And uh, so when they came in, you know, we beat them up there. We beat them here. Uh, I think that was uh, how the series started. And they uh, obviously were really focused and they got off to a great start. Yeah, they're a veteran team. They're very, very smart. They are just so well coached. They do a lot of really good things. They're hard to guard. They had two inside players that really played well. They combined for 30 points and um, I think about 18 or 20 rebounds. So they, they really played well inside, and we were able to play a lot of zone, uh, but unfortunately we weren't able to win the rebounding battle, which has really been costing us. You did uh, really make a change. I uh, really enjoyed listening to that aspect uh, uh, of the game with uh, South Dakota State because you only had 10 turnovers. And obviously a focus after the first game, protecting the basketball a little bit better. Yeah, that's going to be a focus for us all year. We're, we're just not very good at it right now. But they, uh, they're a team we could play zone. Uh, we got down big early, as we are prone to do this year. And we came all the way back. Uh, it was a really great third and fourth quarter for us. Just um, you know, got it to a tie game and really couldn't hold on to the lead. We had pretty balanced scoring throughout the tournament. We always had three or four players in double figures. But in this particular game, Marta Snezek with four charges taken, and she took four more in the uh, final game and uh, just putting her body out there and, uh, and taking the charge. I know that's – I think you, uh, for Christmas, you want charges and also uh, shot clock violations. <laughs> yeah, a free banner too would be nice too. You know, she is a warrior. She really is. She just sacrifices her body. Uh, took, she took eight charges in the tournament, which has got to be some kind of a record phenomenal leader she's doing so many great things to try to bring this young team along and uh, I just I just think she's the glue that's keeping us together right now four players in double figures in the final game against South Florida a team that we're familiar with they were in the Big East Conference with us and you know their coach and their system and uh, we got off to a great start and uh, and really took control of the ball game yeah, we really did. We we played well throughout that game. I thought we did a lot of good things. Um, you know, there's going to be ebbs and flows, I think, in every game. They're going to make a couple of runs. We handled it. We kept our poise, uh, got up pretty big, almost 20 at one point, and then maintained that lead. I thought we took care of the ball. We did everything we needed to do. The game, the way it, it came down, I mean, you got the lead, kept the lead, kept building it, and, uh, and really uh, – the pace of the game was uh, what you want when you're when you've got a lead. You want to use up a little bit of time, and it's not like we're stalling on anybody, but uh, running our sets and uh, taking 20, 25 seconds. Yeah, it, it seems like we're stalling at times. I, I'm sure that that fans are kind of wondering when we're going to shoot the ball, and getting into late shot clock has not been our strength this year. So we we need to do a little better there and trying to score a little bit earlier. Four players in double figures in that game, and uh, again, Anaya Peoples had an outstanding uh, tournament, and uh, just uh, the balance was, was so good. And what a great way to finish up the tournament because it made the plane ride home was shorter by about four hours, didn't it? You know, it's just so good to see improvement. And that, that's the biggest thing. You look at it, you're playing six people, you go into three games in three days, you think the last game is, 
you know, you're going to really look tired. And I thought that we looked in better shape than they did. So I thought that was something that we really were able to, uh, to finally look like we're playing much better basketball. Defensively, we did a lot of really good things. Uh, we were able to play a lot of zone in that game as well. Uh, I, I think we're getting better as a team, and that's that's all we're looking for this time of the year, heading into uh, a tough stretch coming up here with a bunch of ranked teams, and then we go into the ACC. So for us, just, just getting better, trying to keep our heads above water. Well, and that's the great thing about uh, the rest of the season is we have a chance to get a lot better and uh, to get more experience and to uh, get, just get to the point where we're playing with more confidence and uh, able to take it to other teams, especially I love the defense so far. Yeah, yeah, we've, we've got to be able to play great defense because we're not scoring a lot of points. So we've, we've got to be a team that can really, really dig in and get some stops when we need to. We're not scoring a lot of easy baskets. I thought we, we played better in transition in the last game, so hopefully that will continue. We're going to uh, have a break coming up, then we're going to have Beth Cunningham join us uh, here with Coach McGraw. We're going to talk about some of the uh, the things that go on. It's a totally different uh, experience with the coaching staff this year with – a lot of new players and trying to walk back from maybe the most experienced, most talented team maybe in the history of women's basketball to a team uh, with uh, new players. And uh, Beth is certainly involved in all the success that's going on. We'll be talking with her in just a moment. Before we go to the break, we have to throw out another trivia question for you. And uh, so if you're writing these down, here's question number three for tonight. And uh, this question is uh, which Irish coach Finished her playing career with more made three-pointers. Was it Coach Beth Cunningham or was it Coach Mabry? Which one had the most made three-pointers, Coach Cunningham or Coach Michaela Mabry? Write down your answer for that one, and uh, we'll, have, uh, we'll have all those correct uh, answers later in the show, and you get a chance to win our prize, which is uh, we have uh, gift certificates to the Notre Dame Bookstore right in time for Christmas shopping, so that'll be good. We've got to take a break. We'll come back. You're listening to the Muffet McGraw Show, live from O'Rourke's Public House, brought to you by thetirerack.com. This season, you can share a Coke with your team on it, so I'm going to tell you how with a little help from this quarterback. Sally, 44. You can share a Coke when your team's up. Red Poncho. You can share a Coke when your team's down. Happy Dolly. You can even share a Coke with your rival on game day. Or you can share a Coke when you're giving out your famous guacamole recipe in a completely packed stadium. Cilantro, chopped onion, squeeze the lime, rum and tomato, pike. Share a Coke with a fan this season. Ice cold, delicious. Hi, Irish fans. Jack Dolan here for UPS. Your customers want more from your business. You've got to make more happen. Whether they're in Indiana or on the other side of the world, globally or locally, UPS is building solutions to help businesses give their customers exactly what they want. More made easy. UPS, official partner of Notre Dame Athletics. Hi, this is Tim Tyler with Tyler's Heating and Cooling. We are a veteran-owned and operated company with over 75 years' experience servicing heating and cooling systems in Michiana. We're a Linux dealer and knowledgeably service all makes and models of HVAC systems. Quite simply, our business is built on integrity, empowering employees, and serving our community. Many heating and cooling companies advertise sales that are just too good to be true. Others try to sell you more than you need or maybe something that you don't. But at Tyler's, our focus is personally doing what's right and fair for our customers. In fact, when you call Tyler's, you're probably going to be talking to me. And you can trust that my staff and I will do everything to handle your job correctly. Give us a call. See for yourself. Now's the perfect time if your furnace or air conditioner needs service. We probably offer discounts for veterans and first responders as well. Call 574-347-4225 to learn more or schedule service. Or go to calltylershvac.com and find us on Facebook. That's 574-347-4225 or calltylershvac.com. It's the Muffet McGraw Show with your host, Bob Nagel, on Pulse FM. Welcome back to O'Rourke's Public House, the Muffet McGraw Show. For uh, December 2nd, our next show will be December 30th. And that'll be between Christmas and New Year's, and uh, looking forward to that. So uh, make a note of that, if you would, and join us again uh, for that show. We are now joined by one of our veteran coaches, who's also one of our greatest players and a member of the Ring of Honor here at Notre Dame, Beth Cunningham. And, uh, yeah. 
And Beth is hoping that there's a lot of teddy bears for the teddy bear toss because she needs them for her kids. Uh, we'll get one for each one of them. That'd be that'd be <laughs> fine. Uh, Beth, uh, talk about your uh, experience uh, on the trip to Cancun. Well, I'll tell you, it was you know three games and three days, a lot of valuable experience. And you know, I feel like with our team being so young right now, every game is such valuable learning experience. Um, you know, always going, being able to go to the film and show them so many things that you can't quite simulate um, in practice. You know, things just that happen in the game, but. Um, we were certainly disappointed. I mean, felt like we could have won all three games. Uh, didn't play well enough to do so. We knew it was going to be a challenging field heading in. Uh, we knew we'd get great um, experience and be challenged from it. Um, came up with a great win against South Florida, who arguably was, you know, one of the better teams, best team heading in, ranked 21st coming into the tournament. So, um, but all really well coached teams, um, you know, style of play that challenged us um, and certainly think that we can learn a lot from it. Coach, one of the great benefits of your staff is that you have a couple of assistants who've been head coaches. And they've got a lot of great experiences. And I know that uh, one of the things that as a head coach, when you can trust that and you can uh, put a lot of responsibility on those uh, people on your staff, it's a great blessing. Well, it is, especially with a new coach in McKellen. And uh, Beth had coached her and, and worked with her for so long that they have a really good relationship. But she can show her how we do things in terms of scouting. Uh, Beth is such a veteran coach, such a great help to me on the sidelines because when we're on the bench, uh, she has great ideas. She's very poised. She never gets rattled. You never see her up and screaming or, or ranting about anything. She's very calm on the bench, has a great demeanor in dealing with these players. And now uh, then she's working with a lot of the new ones with Destiny and Sam. Um, it's going to really pay off for us. It uh, wasn't really a change from when she was a player. She had yeah. to demeanor on the floor too that I think it almost bothered their opponents <laughs> a lot of times that they couldn't get her riled up or no. whatever but uh, what a what a great leader on the floor and uh, did a great job at Virginia Commonwealth and now uh, doing a great job with our younger players. Very successful as a head coach and we're so happy to have her back with us now. Well I tell you uh, Beth when you think about uh, the experience and the difference from a year ago when uh, we could do variations off of different sets just just verbally on the bench and and make adjustments to what the other team was doing a little different now but uh, a little more patience required but it's coming along well it's a lot of teaching you know sometimes we say things and then you realize with some of the questions they they don't know what we're talking about and we're kind of ahead of ourselves so i think sometimes it's just slowing down making sure that we're teaching um you can't let any of the little things slip by because they they don't know anything yet and so i think it's um you know they're kind of being thrown into the fire there's not a lot of vets or there aren't any veterans out there um, leading the way and showing them. So rather than being able to sit back and maybe watch somebody else go ahead of them, how it's been in years past, they're kind of thrown into the fire. And, you know, the two most experienced players are sitting on the bench too, unfortunately, you know, with Abby and, and Michaela. So, but um, I think the thing that I really appreciate is our kids come in with a great attitude every day, win or lose. Um, they're coachable. You know, Sam's coming on, always coming in with a big smile, ready to be in the gym. Um, I think those are the kinds of things that are going to pay off for us just with that coachable attitude and um, just a willingness to want to get better. I've had comments, Coach, about uh, our schedule. They said, why didn't we weaken the schedule a little bit this year? With, and I said, you, don't, you know, we're always looking to play a tough schedule, number one schedule in the country again, and uh, you really want that kind of a test. So when, you, when you're able to make progress and you're able to perform at a high level, you know, it's uh, without question uh, it was needed because of the competition. I would have been fine with a weaker schedule. <laughs> I, uh, I was a big proponent of a weak schedule. But, you know, when you have to uh, return games and you have certain teams that you play every year, and, and uh, it's so great that you brought that up because Beth is in charge of the yeah, scheduling. Bob, so uh, yeah. that's, uh, that's the person you want to talk to. Well, Beth, let's – no, no, we don't. Bob, talk. did you have to bring that up? <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's part of the deal. Uh, you're also involved uh, in, in recruiting, and uh, Notre Dame has a number three recruiting class coming in next year. I know uh, one of the things that Beth tried to do is get them eligible for this year, <laughs> which would have been really nice. But uh, talk about that whole thing and how it came together. And uh, I know you're, you know, we, we talk about how uh, we got a great team coming in next year and we're working two years down the road to mm -hmm. see if we can keep doing that. Well, I, I think we really filled every need that we had in next year's class. I mean, we, we've got a point guard coming in, a two, three, a four, and a five. Um, and we knew that we needed a, a, a big class as far as depth. Um, but really quality. I mean, all these kids are going to be able to come in and really help us from the get-go. Um, and hopefully the kids and the experiences they've had this year, even though they'll, we'll still be young next year, you know, these uh, experiences they're having will be so valuable to help the new kids coming in. And 
um, you know, to think that we really, you know, we lose Marta, obviously, who's been such an integral part of our team, but just as far as sheer numbers and what we have coming back, it's, I think it's going to be a really exciting group and a great group of freshmen that uh, these, these fans are going to really enjoy watching. Coach, uh, one of the things that happens in recruiting sometimes is a, a certain player will say, well, if they've got this player and that player, then I won't be the, I won't be the focal point, so I'm not going there. How important was last year's experience? We had five great players playing together, and each one made the other better. Mm -hmm. And when the water rises, it rises for everybody. And, and that was just such a unique uh, situation to have that much experience, that much talent uh, together. And it yeah. almost invites the same thing. Well, you know, it was funny when we were recruiting Jessica Shepard, the other teams that she was looking at kept saying, they have too many players you're not going to play. Um, and I, th I think it's an insult to the players to say that, you're, you're doubting my ability to go in there and play. So we, we were just talking about that today. Sometimes it is easier to get kids to come when there's a, a spot open for them. Um, but they want to win. And I think most of the kids, they aren't interested in coming in to be the star anymore. They want to be one that's a part of a team. They want to win more than anything. And that's especially these two freshmen that we have now. I mean, they're all about winning. Well, I remember when Jackie Young came in, she was the leading scorer all time in Indiana. Probably passed you somewhere along the line. She was way <laughs> ahead of me. <laughs> yeah, but uh, came in and said, you know, I don't need to score 35 points a game. How can I help us win? And uh, everybody in the team had that attitude, and I see the same attitude this year. Obviously, we don't have the experience that we had coming back, but uh, just the same kind of a kid that you're recruiting that you can trust them and they can be part of a team. Yeah, and this, this group coming in next year, as Beth said, fills all the needs that we had this year, gives us the added depth. And you, you don't have to rely on one person. I think there's less pressure on everybody. Everybody knows that there's other good players out there. And you look at what we're doing this year with that many players and saying, well, they're getting great experience. They're going to be so prepared for next year. And next year is going to be so much easier on the group coming in because these guys will be great leaders for them. Well, it's going to work out. It, it always has. And uh, we're... We're making a lot of progress. Beth, the, the important question for you now is uh, Christmas shopping. How's it going? Am I going to have any time? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, <laughs> Maybe uh, during final exams I'll start to think about it well, <laughs> with Dan, recruiting. <laughs> Dan gave me a list, so i, I got to get that to you. But uh, uh, It's just great having Beth Cunningham with us, and uh, we're going to have Marta Snezek join us just to, in a moment and uh, spend some more time with uh, both of our coaches. So. We invite you to stay with us. We've got to ask you another trivia question. This is question number four. And uh, number four is, name three of the five signees that Coach McGraw just signed as part of the 2020 recruiting class. So can you name three of the five? By next year, you'll be able to name all five. But uh, you can do that, too, if you want to. But we need three of the five who have committed to play for Notre Dame next year. So that's our uh, question number four. And, uh, again, we'll be collecting those, uh, those tally sheets uh, before our last segment so we know who the winner is. Stay with us. We're back in uh, just a couple of minutes with uh, more with Coach Muffa McGraw and Coach Beth Cunningham. And we'll be joined by Marta Snezek in a moment right here on the Muffa McGraw Show, brought to you by thetirerack.com. This season, you can share a Coke with your team on it. So I'm going to tell you how with a little help from this quarterback. You can share a Coke when your team's up. Red Poncho. You can share a Coke when your team's down. Happy Dolly. You can even share a Coke with your rival on game day. Chili, chili, chili. Or you can share a Coke when you're giving out your famous guacamole recipe in a completely packed stadium. Cilantro, chopped onion, squeeze the lime, rum and tomato, hike. Share a Coke with a fan this season. Ice cold, delicious. Is life throwing you hard knocks? Okay, it's time to go to work. You may be injured or just worn down. Whether it's Notre Dame basketball, work, or just everyday life, South Bend Orthopedics believes everyone should be treated as if they are on the same team. Schedule an appointment with South Bend Orthopedics today. Call 574-247-9441. Let us get you back in the game. As a coach, you wear many hats and need to be ready for anything. You want to be the best that you can be for your players. And LASIK definitely made a big difference for me. Now my vision is sharp, and I can really focus on coaching. To be your best on the court, you need to be aware. And thanks to bowling, I'm not missing a thing. Learn more about Ryan's experience at BowlingHeroes.com. Bowling Vision Center. Amazing happens here. 
Irish fans, Jack Dolan here for UPS. Your customers want more from your business. You've got to make more happen. Whether they're in Indiana or on the other side of the world, globally or locally, UPS is building solutions to help businesses give their customers exactly what they want. More made easy. UPS, official partner of Notre Dame Athletics. We're talking Notre Dame women's basketball. It's the Muffet McGraw Show on Pulse FM. Welcome back to O'Rourke's Public House here at Eddy Street Commons. We've got a great crowd on hand here tonight, and we appreciate everybody coming out and being part of the Muffet McGraw Show. This is show number two. We're going to have five shows all together, so our next show is on uh, December 30th. And uh, we're joined now by one of our veteran transfer student athletes, Marta Sneezek. She wears number 13, just to be lucky. <laughs> And uh, Marta is 5'8", plays like she's 6'3", and she's from McLean, Virginia, and uh, not too far from Washington, D.C. Yeah. So uh, welcome to the show, and welcome to South Bend. And uh, I know you haven't been here a long, long time, but you sure made an impact. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate that. What uh, has been the biggest, uh, I guess, the biggest thing that's uh, uh, been aware, that you've been aware of here at Notre Dame that maybe was a little different? Um, I think coming in as, you know, like you said, a veteran point guard, um, it's just a different experience also being new here. Um, I have a lot of playing experience, but I'm, I'm learning just as much as, you know, let's say the freshmen or, you know, the younger kids. So. And I have a question about your, you're really 5'8"? <laughs> is, that, is that correct? I think that so. What that's, that's what I'm listed as. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to leave it at that. Don't I feel like I'm towering over here. I'm 5'6". Uh-oh. <laughs> 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 well, it... Uh, it works, you know, you can do all those things. Uh, we could list everybody as 6'5 if we wanted to, but uh, <laughs> uh, Marta's done a great job. Uh, Beth, uh, I know it's been a, a, a treat to look over and see a veteran, uh, <laughs> even though it's, it wasn't our system. A lot of great experience from Marta when she came in. Absolutely. I think she, uh, when we played against them a couple years ago, we felt like she single-handedly was the one that ended up beating us, so it's nice to have her on, <laughs> our, on our bench now. And... Um, you know, you just look at the way that she's competed for us in the games and just has been so tough, hard-nosed. And, you know, she mentions it's a lot for her to learn, too, but she certainly has expedited that, and I think it's just picked things up really well. I mean, it's a lot to throw on a point guard that has, is running a completely new system with a completely new group of, of young ladies, and uh, she's just done a great job for us, and um, she really showed a lot of toughness this weekend in how she played, and I think we're just going to continue to see her get better and better and more comfortable and uh, really lead this group. It's so hard for the point guards. They have to think for everybody on the floor. And with this group, that's a lot of thinking. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> it, it's, it's been a challenge, I think, for both of us as yeah. point guards. We're looking the game a certain way, and you mm -hmm. just expect that everybody's going to know where they're supposed to be. What's been the biggest challenge for you? Um, you know, just staying resilient. I think, uh, like you said, it's a new team, you know, new players. Um, I'm dealing with the same things that they are. Um, so kind of just trying to stay calm and poised and help everyone get to where we need to be in March. So Awesome. I know you're excited about the fact that uh, you came from Stanford to Notre Dame. The weather is better <laughs> here. Uh, I do love the seasons. <laughs> yeah, that's good. And you're used to that, being from McLean, Virginia. Absolutely. Uh, that's uh, over the years. There's been a lot of uh, a lot of the uh, senators and congressmen from uh, Washington D.C. who live in the McLean yeah. area. So you've uh, probably had some experience mm -hmm. there with government. Yeah, a little bit, kind of here and there. I mean, I went to school in the city, so I'm, I'm pretty familiar with, with the politicians and, you know, that, that kind of lifestyle you just see a lot in D.C. So I think you could run for office if you wanted to. I, I think, think you, you could, uh, too. You have very, very good uh, <laughs> emotional maturity. So maybe Thank not you. public office then. That's <laughs> not obviously a requirement to be in public office. No, <laughs> actually be a welcome, a welcome <laughs> change. Um, Beth, I want to get you involved in here uh, in recruiting. We've been a little different. Uh, the last few years, uh, there was a time when you really would not have wanted maybe to bring in transfer students. And uh, the way the game is, the way kids are today, it's really uh, not even a choice. And when you get a chance to bring in a fifth-year player, it's, uh, it's really something that we need to do. Absolutely. And I think so much for us, it comes down to fit. And, uh, you know, over the years, I think Jess Shepard was the first transfer we ever took. And then you know, obviously bringing Marta and Destiny in. Um, it's about finding the right fit and the right kid. And 
um, that's going to fit at Notre Dame and, and what we're looking for. And Destiny and Marta were certainly both kids that fit the bill for us and uh, certainly has brought so much uh, value and uh, added experience, you know, to our roster. And the landscape of recruiting has changed a lot. Um, and even though it's changed, you know, we're always very selective. And that's part of the process for us, though, now, too, is looking at, at grad transfers to help build our team. Coach, you have to have gone through Coach McGraw is in her 33rd year at Notre Dame, started when she was 10. <laughs> and uh, But you've gone through so many changes yourself as a head coach and how you've got to handle situations. Yeah, it's it's really different now. I think this generation is, is very different, and we've had to adjust to that. They're not quite as, as tough as when Beth was playing. Uh, I think some of the older players look at us now as uh, how soft we are. We don't make them <laughs> run as much as they used to. Uh, I think, but now with the, with the transfers, we, we usually like to have a pretty small team anyway, 10 or 11. Um, but now you, you have to be sure that you're going to be able to keep kids. So you want to you want to recruit a few more, and then you have too many, and then kids aren't playing, so they're not happy, so they transfer. So it, it, it really it's 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 a terrible situation that we're in right now. You're kind of over recruiting, and kids are are going to leave just the same. So whether you under recruit or over recruit, you have to be aware of that. And, of course, last year, if you weren't playing, it might have been because we had five All-Americans yeah. playing <laughs> ahead of you, so there was uh, some limited playing time. But uh, you, you really do feel this uh, group starting to mesh together. There isn't somebody out there saying, give me the ball or whatever. Um, Marta, I want to ask you, like, if there's somebody uh, you need to go to, you've got three or four answers out there on the floor. Absolutely. People can uh, make a shot. Yeah. I think, you know, everyone. everyone's looking to score. W I think, you know, we're still learning our offense and defense, but I think everyone's capable, so. Well, we've got some outstanding uh, shooters. I, I love what uh, Caitlin Gilbert did uh, down in uh, Cancun, and uh, it's just a, an amazing process to see everybody mature, and uh, we saw what she did in seven games last year, and then she had to sit out, but uh, she's really uh, a, a good shooter. Yeah, she really is. You know, the great thing about our offense is there's something for everybody in there. And you just, it takes a lot of time to figure out this is the good place for me to be in the offense. And we're starting to learn that now, um, whether we're running Princeton Chin or, or what offenses we're looking at. Um, it's the same offense, but it's different for everybody. So we have a couple of people that can put the ball on the floor. Some people are coming off of flare screens. Some people are just making great cuts to the basket. And I think now is the time where they're going like, wow, this, this is a good spot for me to be in. So I think that's why we're looking better right now. Well, and you can't, you can't simplify it. You can't dummy down the game. We want to play at a high level and, uh, and develop a lot of things so that by mid-season, later in the season, we're a team that can uh, realize its potential. Yeah, you know, it all starts with the point. I mean, I think that's the most important position on the floor, and that's why we're, we're just so pleased with the way Marta's leading this team. Well, Mar you. Marta, you've got a number of challenges coming up yep. on the schedule <laughs> yep. and uh, opponents uh, in the conference and all that. We've got one of the toughest challenges coming up for you here in our next segment. You have to be on with Sam Burnell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm and, excited. <laughs> and uh, boy, I tell you what, she uh, she really put an A of people over the coals last week. Really? So. But it made <laughs> she her tell me that. <laughs> it made her tougher, and she won the uh, rookie of the uh, rookie of the week award in the ACC. So uh, yeah. we're looking forward to that. Great to uh, have you on the show, and Thank great you. to have you here at Notre Dame. I know the first time we met. I said, uh, did you play for Stanford mm -hmm. uh, in those two regional? And you said, yeah. <laughs> I said, get away from me. I don't <laughs> want to. Do but uh, we're also glad to have, uh, we're really glad to have uh, Marta Snezek with us, uh, not only on the show, but certainly here at Notre Dame. We've got to take a break, and uh, we'll be back in just a moment. Are you, re are you ready for another trivia question? And here is the question. Marta Snezek was both a Washington, D.C. Gatorade Player of the Year in 2015 in basketball. And what other sport? What other sport was she uh, uh, a uh, Player of the Year in 2015? She was in basketball and one other sport. Write down your answer. And then we'll start to uh, collect those in just a couple of moments. Back with uh, our wonderful uh, Sam Saloon section uh, coming up next. Sam Brunel will join us here on the Muffin McGraw Show. Stay, stay with us. Our, our show, show brought, brought to you by thetirerack.com. This season, you can share a Coke with your team on it. So I'm going to tell you how with a little help from this quarterback. Sally, 44. You can share a Coke when your team's up. Red Poncho. You can share a Coke when your team's down. Happy Dolly. You can even share a Coke with your rival on game day. 
Or you can share a Coke when you're giving out your famous guacamole recipe in a completely packed stadium. Cilantro, chopped onion, squeeze the lime, rum and tomato, hike! Share a Coke with a fan this season. Ice cold, delicious! Appetit. At first it was just an annoyance, but then it started affecting my daily life. My hernia was stopping me from doing what I enjoy. That's when I learned about robotic surgery at St. Joe. With a simple outpatient procedure, I was back to normal in days, not weeks. Thanks to St. Joe, I've turned time sitting out into time cherishing the people I love. Get back to the things you enjoy. Schedule your hernia assessment today. Call 1-833-300-WELL. Do you hear that Coors Light being poured? It's the perfect temperature. How can I tell just based on the sound? I can't. But I can see that the mountain on the can is blue. And when the mountain is blue, your Coors Light is perfectly cold. Coors Light is cold lagered for a crisper taste, cold filtered for brightness and clarity, and cold packaged for peak refreshment. Doesn't that sound good? 2019 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. Hi, Irish fans. Jack Dolan here for UPS. Your customers want more from your business. You've got to make more happen. Whether they're in Indiana or on the other side of the world, globally or locally, UPS is building solutions to help businesses give their customers exactly what they want. More made easy. UPS, official partner of Notre Dame Athletics. Live from O'Rourke's Public House in Eddy Street Commons, it's the Muffet McGraw Show on Pulse FM. And we're back with you once again from O'Rourke's Public House. Great fans here tonight and uh, really looking forward to another session with Sam. And uh, Sam Brunell is here to uh, handle this uh, session, and she's going to be talking with Marta Sneezek with uh, some tough questions and, uh, and a real grilling coming up here. So, Sam, take it away. Thank you, everybody, for being here for the segment of Sam Saloon. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! All right, Marta. Yes. So you come from a family of nine. Yep. You have eight other siblings, and yeah. you are the second youngest, right? Yes. How does that competitiveness go throughout the family? Well, my dad used to say we used to we learned how to box out in front of the fridge. So <laughs> <laughs> everything's a competition in my family. Um, yeah, so I just think, you know, everything from, like, games or, you know, playing with – I have six brothers, so, like, everything just naturally is competitive. We used to, you know, roughhouse it, like, in the backyard and right. that kind of stuff. So That's awesome. Um, and being the second youngest, would you say you're the favorite? Um, That's the real <laughs> question here because – My family's watching this, so I will not <laughs> say that I'm the favorite. <laughs> but um, I think we're all very loved. That is amazing. <laughs> that is quite amazing. What you guys don't know is – Mara's quite the angel, but she is also <laughs> quite a crazy person. <laughs> she is an amazing point guard, I will say that much. Um, but talking about how Cancun went, yes, you were a charge queen mm -hmm. as you were just discussing a little bit ago. Mm -hmm. You had eight charges. Like, What does it take to take a charge in your head? Um, I don't know. I just think it's about being in position. I don't really think about it too much beforehand. Um, obviously, we're trying to win the game, anything that can – you know, help us get there. Um, if it means taking charges, putting my body in line, like, I'll do that. Um, right. But, yeah, it's just, um, just I don't know. I don't really think about it too much. That's, you know, I aspire <laughs> to be like you when it comes to taking charges. And yeah. as you would say, Coach, I've been trying to <laughs> recently, <laughs> trying to put my body in line a little bit. It's kind of yeah. working, but, you know, we're getting there. Anywho, um, you know, I think that for you to be – you know, a big leader on this team. Mm -hmm. You're a grad transfer from Stanford. You've lived in you've lived in Virginia. You lived in Stanford. Mm -hmm. Now you're here in South Bend. So yep. you kind of experienced the extremes of the extremes weather-wise. Yes. Which place would you say you like to live the most, though? Um, right here, right now. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great answer. That's awesome. Okay. <coughs> what do you think, being a senior leader on this team, you're also – new to this team mm -hmm. so you're learning a lot but what is it what do you think is important um you know for the younger you know generation who just came in myself Anea, yeah. and you know all the sophomores and everything so you're trying to handle a lot right now like how is that how is that going for you and uh, moving forward um well I think it's going great I mean just because you guys are freshmen you and they are like the younger kids I mean you guys have grown so much even in like the few months that I've been here 
Um, but you guys make it super easy. So um, just working hard and just trying to help everyone get to the same place, like I was talking about earlier. You know, we all have one goal um, to be competing for national championship at the end of the year. So, You're right. Yeah. What is the one thing that is about coach that you aspire to be like? Oh, the one thing. Hmm. I have to pick one. Um, top three. <laughs> top, top three. three. <laughs> no, let's just go with one. Um, I think she's so resilient. I think anything that comes her way, like, she just, you know, either brushes it off or she's like, okay, like, on to the next thing. So right. I think Coach and I are very similar in a lot of ways. We're both um, – we're both Reds, we talked about before. but um, I was just about to say, earlier in preseason, our, us as a team, we did this uh, activity thing with a, uh, with a company that basically is you take a survey mm -hmm. and it asks you questions about yourself, yep. and it lists you as four different colors. So you're, one, you're like red or yellow or green or blue. And Marta <laughs> and Coach were both Reds, I believe. We were the only two that were Reds, would actually. You, would you like <laughs> to tell them what a Red is? And they'll <laughs> understand this a lot more when you tell them this. Um, a red <laughs> is just is a doer, someone that just does things. Um, very fast-paced, mission-oriented, um, right to the point, um, very, yeah, very direct. Um, but, yeah, that's a red. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Me and Coach. <laughs> and I was a happy blue, a very <laughs> outgoing person, you know, <laughs> always bringing the positive vibes to the party. Yeah. Sam Saloon, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right, Marta. Okay. What is the one book you've read that is your favorite? To Kill a Mockingbird. Tell us why. I read that <laughs> book in high school. I don't know. I just, I just like Scout and her brother, and um, I just like the storyline. I think it was one of like the first books like I actually like read. Read. Um, <laughs> I know you have to like read a lot of books for school, but right. that's the first one like that really caught my attention. I just like the plot. No, that's that's awesome. I remember that book very well. Yeah, great read. I uh, recommend it to everybody. <laughs> if you haven't already read <laughs> it, if you haven't already read it, please read it. I'm sure you can find it in any bookstore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Marta. If you could only eat one thing for the rest of your life, what would it be? Um, pasta for sure. Interesting. Not ketchup. You know what mine would be? <laughs> ketchup. <No. laughs> I am a huge ketchup addict on the team. Uh, they give me a hard time all the time because I put it on every meat. No, any, literally everything. You name something, I probably put ketchup on it. So, fun fact. Biggest pet peeve, Marta. What um, would that be? Either um, talking with your mouth or be or talking with your mouth full or being late. Okay. Yeah. All right. What would be your dream job if you couldn't play basketball? I would play another sport that I don't want to say because it was a trivia question. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys will find out later. <laughs> awesome. If, you've had, if you had to be handcuffed to somebody for an entire day, who would you choose? <laughs> Not you. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I love you. Heart um, broke. <laughs> I would choose my little sister, Kat. Um, we just get along super well, and I haven't seen her in a while, so we could probably use that. Is she your favorite sibling? No, I love all my siblings. Oh, equally. But all my other ones are like, well, I have an older sister. She's got kids, so I can do that. Um, <laughs> but I have six brothers, and that just wouldn't work out. Oh, yeah. interesting. Logistically speaking. So then, yes. Yeah, my little sister. All right, to wrap this up, who's the best cook on the team? Me or Mick? My pork chops. No, Sam, you Everything you cook, you have ketchup with it. And all you cook is pork chops anyway. I anyways. don't put ketchup on it for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, thank you all so much for joining this segment of Sam Saloon. Thank we appreciate you. it. Thank you, Marta, for joining us today. Thanks, Sam. Back to you, Bob. Sam, I'll tell you what. We're going to ex we're gonna have to expand Sam's segment, I think, uh, <laughs> in the shows that come. And, Sam, we have something special for you. Oh, wow. <gasps> oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your own, your own <laughs> bottle of ketchup. Tomato ketchup, enough. I love it. Nice work, Marta. Thank you thank so much. Thank you so much for having me. How about a great hand for Marta and Sam? We'll take a break, come back with Coach McGraw in a moment, and uh, wrap up the show. What the hour just flew by. So stay with us. We're at O'Rourke's Public House at Eddy Street Commons. The Muffin McGraw Show continues in a moment. At first, it was just an annoyance, but then it started affecting my daily life. My hernia was stopping me from doing what I enjoy. That's when I learned about robotic surgery at St. Joe. 
With a simple outpatient procedure, I was back to normal in days, not weeks. Thanks to St. Joe, I've turned time sitting out into time cherishing the people I love. Get back to the things you enjoy. Schedule your hernia assessment today. Call 1-833-300-WELL. As a coach, you wear many hats and need to be ready for anything. You want to be the best that you can be for your players. And LASIK definitely made a big difference for me. Now my vision is sharp, and I can really focus on coaching. To be your best on the court, you need to be aware. And thanks to bowling, I'm not missing a thing. Learn more about Ryan's experience at BowlingHeroes.com. Bowling Vision Center. Amazing happens here. Hi, Irish fans. Jack Dolan here for UPS. Your customers want more from your business. You've got to make more happen. Whether they're in Indiana or on the other side of the world, globally or locally, UPS is building solutions to help businesses give their customers exactly what they want. More made easy. UPS, official partner of Notre Dame Athletics. Is life throwing you hard knocks? Okay, it's time to go to work. You may be injured or just worn down. Whether it's a Notre Dame basketball, work, or just everyday life, South Bend Orthopedics believes everyone should be treated as if they are on the same team. Schedule an appointment with South Bend Orthopedics today. Call 574-247-9441. Let us get you back in the game. It's the Muffet McGraw Show with your host, Bob Nagel, on Pulse FM. And once again, uh, welcome to O'Rourke's Public House, the Muffet McGraw Show. And uh, Coach McGraw and I uh, kind of agree. I think we got to give Sam maybe two segments on the show. They're doing a great job. She really is. I'd love to have her up here interviewing me. Well, I'll tell you what, we get her uh, scoring average above 25. We'll do, yeah. That's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Thanks again, Sam, and, and Marta was great. Uh, Coach, as we get ready to wrap up the show, I want to talk about what's ahead. Wednesday night, the ACC Big Ten Challenge, and we've had some really good games uh, over the years in that, in that sequence. Been, uh, uh, what do we know about Minnesota? I know it's a program that's had a lot of success in the past. Yeah, they have coached by Lindsey Whalen, who just got uh, finished playing in the WNBA. She's a terrific point guard. She played at Minnesota had a long career, played an Olympian. She's done everything there was to do in basketball, and now she's using that in coaching. I wish we'd have more women come over from the WNBA to coach. She uh, just knows the game so well. This is her second year. They had a great year last year, and they're coming in with uh, a really good team. We'll have to keep an eye on her, make sure she doesn't try to sneak yeah. in the game. <laughs> I mean, uh, we always thought that Neil Ivey should get in the game. Maybe Beth Cunningham shoot a couple of threes, but uh, she does uh, do a great job up there at Minnesota. Uh, we've got uh, a game coming up on Sunday at Connecticut. Always a tough opponent, another good road test for the Irish. And uh, I know uh, it's uh, it's been one of the premier games, and uh, it's really important that the top teams play each other. It really is, and, it, and you saw that this past weekend with uh, Louisville beating Oregon and uh, Baylor goes down. So number one and two both went down, which you don't see in women's basketball very often. So it's great to see the parity is coming to our game. We've got a game coming up on the 11th uh, against DePaul. Uh, Doug Bruno's squad is uh, always uh, uh, a team that uh, they love to pass the ball. They love to shoot the threes and uh, get up and down the floor. And uh, what are you expecting from Doug this year? Well, I'll tell you, they're a, they're a tough team for us right now. They shoot 40 or 50 threes per game. Uh, they're undefeated right now playing great basketball. They're a team that we've uh, – you, you can never rest when you play them because they are up-tempo. They want to score 90 they're going to just come down and shoot it. Um, you know, for us, if we're playing with our bigs, it's going to be a tough game for uh, Cosgrove to be out on the perimeter trying to guard a three-point shooter. So it'll be a, a short bench for that game. Yeah. And Danielle's, uh, again, making progress. She started two games for us, and we're 2-0 and when she's been in that starting lineup. So uh, uh, we're excited about the game with uh, DePaul. Then on December 21st, Oh, by the way, the DePaul game is a teddy bear toss. And again, I want to uh, mention that again. Uh, December 21st is the shortest day of the year. And we welcome Guelph, a uh, team from Canada, to the Purcell Pavilion. It'll be fun. Yeah, well, that came about because of Natalie Trauma. She, that's where she's from. Uh, the coach of the team, Mark Walton, coached Natalie when she was younger and uh, one of the developmental teams for Canada basketball. 
Um, so we were trying to get that as the Ring of Honor game, and the, you know we, we set the whole thing up, and then Natalie was uh, thought she might be going overseas, which she is now playing in France. So uh, you know we we wanted to keep the game on the schedule, but we had that big break in the schedule. We couldn't find a game. We didn't want to go f about two weeks without a game, and so they were kind enough to come down and play us during that time. So it is an exhibition game. It doesn't count on our record. Um, it you know was a game that we normally would have played early in November. We've got Christmas coming up after that, then the start of the ACC season, uh, home date against Clemson. And, uh, again, the ACC is probably the top uh, conference in the country. Yeah, I think it is. You know, you look in the top 25, and I think there's five teams ranked and a, a couple more getting votes. So it's, it's going to be another great season for us. Well, I know that the uh, busy schedule in the month of December and then, well, when we get into January and February, it goes by in such a hurry. And again, we're going to see that uh, evolution of the program and development of this young team. Communications uh, will improve, and uh, it's going to be a, a really fun time to get, get through December. Yeah, you know, it really is, and, and we couldn't do it without our fans. That, that is what's really getting us through some of these home games. And it's great to see people out in the community and have them say, like, we're with you. We know this year isn't the one that we had last year, um, but we're, we're there for you. We got your back, and, and we really we need you all this year. So thanks for being here, and thanks for coming out to the games. All righty. Hey, we got a couple of notes to pass along to you. We mentioned the teddy bear toss. Christmas at Purcell is on the 21st, and then uh, the baby race on the 29th. And uh, we have a winner in our trivia contest. And uh, I guess the questions were pretty tough this week because we didn't have uh, – nobody swept uh, – oh, uh, Matt McGraw, you knew the answer? <laughs> did you? Oh, I see. <laughs> Good idea. I think Muffet helped her out. helped him out with that. But uh, the winning team this week – is the uh, Sam Saloons fans. Where are you guys? Holy cow. Sam Saloons fans had uh, the most correct answers, and so they're going to win the gift certificates to the Notre Dame bookstore. We appreciate everybody's... Uh, oh, the answers. Good idea, Matt. Cat uh, Westbelt is the uh, player playing uh, for Adelaide down in Australia with Brianna Turner. So, Cat Westfeld, uh, the, the team that we have not played in the Big Ten ACC Challenge was uh, Purdue. And then, um, let's see, the one with the most three-pointers, Beth Cunningham had three more than, uh, than Michaela. And, uh, of course, Marina Mabry is the all-time leader. And uh, if you could mention our uh, recruits from last year, uh, you would have mentioned uh, Amara Abdurrahim, uh, Ali Campbell, Lasia Hayes, Natal Lija. <laughs> How am I doing? <laughs> Keep going, Bob. You're uh, doing great. Uh, Nat Marshall. Natalia, yeah. Let's go we'll call her Nat Marshall. <laughs> and, uh, and Maddie Westbelt. So those were the five recruits uh, that committed to Notre Dame. And uh, the other sport that uh, – Marta. The other sport that Marta Stizek was involved with was uh, soccer. Somebody said, uh, a couple of people said softball, but it was soccer. And, uh, well, we won't use a tiebreaker because we can use that next time. But uh, congratulations to Sam Saloon's fans for uh, being uh, our, our winning team. Uh, Coach, when you uh, look at what we've done so far, what we've got coming up in December, and what we can be by the end of the season, Still a lot of reason to be excited about this team and how hard they're working. Yeah, you know, every time we win, we get a little more hopeful of what we can be. When we won that game at Michigan, that was a big win. Uh, I mean, the, to beat a ranked team on the road at this time in the season, I don't, I don't know that we expected that to happen. And we just came out and played well for 40 minutes. So you saw that that's kind of the standard of what we expect all the time. And then, you know, we went down a little bit and didn't play our best games uh, for the first two in Cancun. So, you know, now we're back up beating a ranked team. But we, uh, we've we got a really tough week coming up. DePaul's ranked. Um, Minnesota was, is getting votes. They're a team that just beat Arizona State who was ranked. So there's so much parity in the game. Every game is going to be just a fight to the finish. And we've got to get off to a better start. I think that's the biggest thing. We've got to rebound. We've got to get off to a better start. Well, and our fans will be there with the – Green shirts to get us going in that uh, game against Minnesota. Going to really need you because Minnesota, as we said, is a, is a good team. They're averaging about 81 points a game. So we're going to have to play that uh, that really good defense again. And, uh, uh, Coach, I got a note here from uh, Matt McGraw. <laughs> said, whatever you do, don't wish Coach McGraw a happy birthday on the show because she wouldn't want anybody to know their birthday is coming up on Thursday. So we won't mention that. 
Happy birthday. Thanks, Bob. All righty. <laughs> uh, thanks to all of our great fans who are here tonight. Thanks to Bob Henning, our engineer, and to uh, Jed Dubecki, who is working back in our studio. Josh Bates, Katie Caps, Angie Potoff, Sarah Higgins, Greg Hughes, and our guest, uh, Beth Cunningham, and Marta Sneezek. Thank you very much. And Sam Burnell from Sam Saloon. Nice job again, Sam. And our next show comes your way uh, December 30th. Until then, I'm Bob Nagel for Coach McGraw. Thanks for being with us on the Muffin McGraw Show. Thanks for listening to the Muffet McGraw Show, live from O'Rourke's Public House. The Muffet McGraw Show is brought to us by TireRack.com, Bowling Vision Center, South Bend Orthopedics, West Bend Insurance, Coors Light, St. Joseph Health System, UPS, Coca-Cola, Resonato, and O'Rourke's Public House. Be listening for...